Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, I am in front of my 48 volt setup that I have. Um, it consists of a grow watt, 3000 watt and 48 volt inverter. Um, I have uh, an EFG uh, 100 amp 48 volt battery uh, on the wall. And then I also have just a bank down here of four random 12 volt batteries all connected in series to make another 48 volt battery pack. That gives me another 100 amp hours. So I basically have 200 amp hours at 48 volts, which for right now is totally fine with me. I would like to be able to add on to it later, but that's a whole nother story to begin with. The one thing that I do notice that the, the percentages uh, of charge, the state of charge of this battery and the state of charge when I connect to the Bluetooth of this Tyco run battery are wildly different and also the voltages between each one of these batteries since they're all completely different manufacturers different dates the voltages are all different even though they they do all equal out to the voltage of the 48 volt battery pack up here so everything is in parallel and it is a voltage balance these batteries are not balanced at all and just to give you an example I'm I connected to this Tyco run battery, and here is the state of charge right there, 22%. Now, if we look at the screen on the 48 volt battery on the wall from EFG, it shows the cell capacity, the state of charge is at 81%. So, I mean, we're talking 60% difference. And I mean, that could be just a shunt issue. It could be anything, but Let's take the voltages of each one of these batteries and I'll show you what the differences are in those. Okay, the four batteries that I have are the Cinerus, the Golden Mate, the Red Odo, and the Tyco Run. And as you can see, uh, this is my connection to my 48 volt battery right here. It goes to the positive of the Cinerus, and then it goes negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and then our negative is the main negative going back to the bank. All of these wires are exactly the same length uh, when it comes to comparisons. So the ones connecting the batteries are all the same length and the ones connecting to the main battery, these two are the same length as well. Okay, so let's check the voltage of the Tyco Run battery, which is on the far negative side. And that voltage is 12.76. Uh, the Red Odo right next to it is 12.87. The Golden Mate is 12.73 and the Cinerist is 12.95. There's two tenths of a volt difference between the sides over here and they're all completely different. And I really started to wonder, I was like, I, you know, maybe I should do something about this. I actually got on YouTube because I follow some, some true off-grid people. And one of them is Bob. He lives in Hawaii. I'm sure you know him. He is from uh, Projects in Paradise 808. He made a small little video on the, the Litime battery balancer. Now this is a battery balancer and I believe it can do 10 amps of balancing and it's made for just this. It's made for balancing your 12 volt batteries that are in series for a 48 volt, volt pack. So I'm excited about going ahead and connecting this up to this little bank system right here. So the first thing I need to do is I need to basically turn all this system off, uh, get everything, get these wires disconnected from the main bank and then go ahead and wire this up. Okay, and now you're probably asking, okay, what do you even use this system for? I mean, it, I, mean it, I think it looks nice. But I mean, is it really useful? Yes, it really is useful. Uh, the way I have it wired up is actually this 48 volt system, it goes to a manual transfer switch that's connected to my main panel. So it powers multiple rooms and uh, a couple of refrigerators and also um, my furnace, just to make sure if it gets cold and the power goes out, I can still get heat throughout the house if I want it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over first and I'm going to switch all the manual transfer switches back over to the house grid to basically turn off the power consumption of this unit. The manual transfer switch that I decided to get was the ProTrans 2. Uh, it is a six, a six circuit switch 
Um, it's super easy to connect. Uh, ProTrans does a great job in uh, showing you a bunch of videos on exactly how to do this. So definitely look into that if you're looking into this ProTrans switch. I'll have a link to this in my description in case you want to look into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch um, circuit F, circuit D, and circuit B from generator back down to line. All right, and there we go. Everything is back to using my grid on my house and, uh, and my 48 volt battery should be just sitting on standby. All right, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just shut off the inverter. So now there is no output. And since this is a hybrid system, it does use AC power. So I'm going to be shut it off, shutting off the AC as well. All right, AC is now turned off and let's not forget about the solar that's going in. And the next thing to do is to power down this battery so the whole system is off. And I'm gonna be doing that by this circuit breaker right here. And then the power button. All right, now that everything's turned off, let's go ahead and open up this battery balancer and see what's inside. And it's really not much. What we have is a product manual. Uh, it looks like we have some uh, mounting hardware and we have the battery balancer itself. This is actually smaller than I thought it would be. Okay, and from what I can see, what's nice about this battery balancer is it does have four positive and negative connections. They all have your uh, M8 terminal connections on, the, on the, the ring connectors on them. So you don't have to do about any, about, you don't have to worry about crimping or anything like that. Uh, it looks like they're about maybe, I don't know, 16 to 18 inches in length. And this balancer can be used for 24 volt, 36 volt, and 48 volt systems. So if you only have a 24 volt system, you can still use this. You just only connect, you know, half of the balancers. You just connect those, uh, those right there. Okay, a little bit about this, uh, this balancer. Uh, it can do between 3 and 20 volts DC per circuit. Uh, it's going to do between 0 and 10 amps, and it has a standby of five milliamps so it's not going to really drain your batteries at all that you'll notice it does have short circuit protection and reverse polarity protection just in case you mess something up it has operating temperatures dimensions cable length they're all right there it also has a, reg uh, a register warranty qr code so you can actually register it for the warranty and the one thing that i cared about is how should i connect it and in the manual, it does say, note, a complete circuit is formed by each positive and negative terminal starting from the far left. So you'll want to make sure and start on this side of the balancer. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and take each one of these and I'm going to connect this one, the far left, to the centrus. And I'm just going to keep going down the line and connect all the batteries up. Uh, you want to make sure that these connections right here that are the main power connections, they stay closest to the battery terminal. You want to put these balancers on top of these wires right here because these will give less amperage than these will. And I think the safest way to do this is to go ahead and disconnect the main to this battery and the, the negative, po the positive and negative to this battery and then disconnect one side of each one of these serial connections. So that way you're only working with 12 volts at any time until, uh, until everything's all connected. All right, and now that I've got all of the batteries separated from each other, now I'm gonna go ahead and take the rest of the wiring off because I know that I'm only working with 12 volts now. Okay, all of the batteries are disconnected. So I'm gonna go ahead and start on this side, connect up the negative, and then the positive on the same circuit. All right, and then I'm gonna connect the negative and positive of the second battery, and I'm just gonna do this whole thing down the line until I get to the very nice negative, and then I will connect that negative back to the main battery. All right, the balancer is now installed. So before we turn anything back on, 
as you can tell, uh, the wire management of this is going to be kind of um, a hassle for some people. You know, I might, I might install this on the wall, but I doubt it. I'm probably just going to keep it right here because all of these are going to have caps on them. All right, now that the balance is all wired up, we can go ahead and, and reverse the sequence and turn everything back on. And what's interesting is this battery does not show that it's receiving any amperage at all because this pack and this pack are the same voltage. Even though these are getting amperage between each other, it doesn't change the ultimate voltage of this 48 volt bank compared to this one. So that's nice. Okay, turned our grow watt back on. All right, our thousand watts of solar that we have are now starting to charge up uh, the battery. It's in charge mode. Let's go ahead and turn on the grid power so that way uh, we can have our hybrid AC connection as well. And then last but not least, I'm gonna go back over to our manual transfer switch and turn those circuits back on. All right, and I was wanting to turn on the kitchen refrigerator, the kitchen foyer and half bath, and finally the family room and dinette. The other ones I leave off, uh, I leave them on the line just because those are only for true emergencies. All right, so I'm gonna come back tomorrow morning. Uh, I'm gonna give it 24 hours and then we'll see what the voltages of these batteries are. All right, everyone. Well, it's been about 26 hours since I put this lit time battery balancer on this 48 volt pack. Now, let's go ahead and check the results of the voltages in these batteries now. All right, first we'll check the Tyco run. 13.19 the red odo 13.17 the golden mate 13.2 and the cinerus 13.2 now that is a vast improvement in balance compared to what it was just yesterday i am really happy with what this battery balancer from lit time has done for me now, the reason that I chose this lit time uh, battery balancer is, well, because Bob from uh, Projects in Paradise 808 uh, kind of described it to me. And I like the fact that it doesn't have any external displays. I'm not going to be checking this every day to make sure that these batteries are balanced. I'm just going to assume that it works. So I don't want to have that extra milliamp hour, you know, degradation from my battery pack just to have a little display. So... The time I'm really happy with this balancer and I'm glad that you made it. If you have any questions about the Litime battery balancer, please leave them in the comments. I, again, I'll have a link to this in my description just in case you want to look into it further. Thank you so much and thank you for Bob at Projects in Paradise 808 showing me this battery balancer. Thank you again for watching this video and have a great day. Bye bye.